Got another review for you today with the Nightcore F4 and this was sent in via the company for a test. This is quite an interesting product because it is a charger and it's also a power bank combined into the one unit and as I normally do we'll just run over some of the box just to show you the features and spec and then we'll get on to doing some tests later on. Going through what's included now, pretty simple package, you get a micro USB cable, the length of that's about 80 centimeters. There is your user guide and warranty card. I'll show you the manual a bit later on. And the unit itself is quite a small size. They've obviously tried to keep this as compact as possible. On the left hand side, we have the micro USB port, the two USB type A outputs, and there is your power button on the right. Large button on that, fairly easy to find. On the underside, not much to see apart from the certification and markings. As far as the fit and finish goes, this is more of a satin finish. It does show fingerprints a bit. But they have got some mouldings on the bottom part there so when you push it up it just gives you a little bit of grip and it slides up quite smoothly. The plastics on this are not super thick but they're not fragile thin either. I'd sort of consider it to be okay, I don't have a problem with it. They're going for a design which is uh, fairly compact and small. I measured it at around 72mm in length for the slot length with the spring pushed right the way down and this takes protected 18650 cells which is unusual for this type of a product. Similar ones that I have seen are usually just for the unprotected cells. You can take the lid off of this. You can just pull it out to the side. It is fairly flexible and then just take it off. That's gonna make things possibly a bit easier with removing the batteries, which I'll get onto a bit later on. As you can see, it does pick up fingerprint marks a bit. It's quite flexible plastic though, so hopefully that means that it won't shatter or crack if you drop it putting a few batteries into it now and you'll see with the unprotected cells there's no problem at all with those there's a reasonable amount of space there for them but with this Olight protected 18650 they need a little bit more pressure to get in so once you've pushed it down you just have to sort of click it into place and it fits in so when I show you the springs at the bottom you'll see that it's more compressed with a protected seal as you'd expect the downside to this is it's harder to remove the batteries. They're quite close together. I understand what Nike are trying to do here is keep it as small as possible. I don't really have any fingernails, so it's a bit fiddly for me. What I would have liked is really to have had a bit more space there, maybe another three or four millimeters with the spring movement. It just makes it a bit easier to get batteries out. If you've two or three cells in, not a huge problem, but if you've all four of them in there, it can be a little bit fiddly and that is something which I would have changed myself. Putting a few of the Nightcore IMR batteries in and what I'll do is show you the display on this. As soon as you put a cell in, it will start to come up the backlight. It stays on for around about nine, 10 seconds, then it goes into a power saving. So you just press the button again to bring that back up. Display is pretty useful on this and it's something which you don't have on the other F-series chargers and power banks from Nightcore. Close up shot on the screen, the backlight is quite bright so you can see it in lower light conditions. All you need to do with this is just press the power button to cycle through the four banks if you have four batteries inserted and it will give you the voltage readout for each one and also you'll see the symbol there, the five bars which will show you the battery status. I'll plug this in now to charge it, micro USB, I probably would have preferred a type C connector. One of the nicer features with this, it doesn't just show you the voltage, you can see how much has been charged into the batteries and you can also see what the current charge rate is. It does split time between those two banks, the two in the left and the two in the right, so bear that in mind. You have a total of two amps to play with, so with more than two cells you're going to be down to about half an amp charging speed. Accuracy on this is also pretty good, it seems to be quite close to the Drock USB tester that I have and it will adjust that in real time to show you. What I'll do now is put a phone into charge and you'll see what happens when you're charging a device with the power bank. This phone is partially charged, it's about 80% so I won't get the full charge rate, but it's showing you the charge rate of just over half an amp. Once you plug in another USB output, you'll see that it'll automatically switch over. Just push and hold for three seconds to toggle between the one and two outputs to be able to check the charging speed. This power bank would charge the first pair of batteries first and then keep the second set spare unless of course it doesn't have enough power then it will switch over to them. That might be useful if you need to use the second set of batteries in an emergency. 
Viewing angles are generally pretty good, but at extreme angle at the front, not so good, it tends to fade. And once you go behind, then it disappears completely. Would have been nice if I had slightly better viewing angles on this. As well as the ABS materials and the usual short circuit protection, they've got the reverse polarity protection as well, and you'd expect that on any type of a charger or device. So nothing comes up if you put batteries in the wrong way around. Testing the termination on this, it's around about 4.18 4.17. I put a good few batteries through this, so it's quite consistent. This is a charge capacity test that I did with the Nightcore batteries, and they took 6,138 milliamp hour into the batteries and it discharged 3606 this is just to give you an idea of the efficiency it's just under the 60 percent you do get better performance from dedicated power banks but it's just to give you an idea on what to expect and it does cut the voltage at three volts so it won't fully discharge the cells when you're using it as a power bank didn't see any problems with small devices i've got a sand disk mp3 player here and it was charging that without any problems so that's fine for things like bluetooth headphones and other small battery capacities this is the main section of the user guide just in case you want to have a quick look i'll put a link below so you can download that and check it out it just covers the areas that i've looked at solar charging is good on this because you can instantly see the charge rate that you're getting a lot of panels you don't have that and it also interestingly works at a very low rate i've just got over 100 milliamps here and it's still charging which is quite impressive what i would like to see is slightly longer slots just to make it a bit easier with batteries removing them and um, the viewing angles and type c are other minor points that i would like to mention but it is a decent overall option if you are someone who occasionally charges and uses the power bank function Hopefully you found that useful. If you've got any questions on this or thoughts or suggestions, do drop a comment below. Thanks very much for watching the video. I do appreciate it.